G'day guys, Ziggy D here. Let's dive into some Grim Dawn. The game is just about released and is now feature complete and fully patched. For you guys who are unfamiliar, Grim Dawn is a spiritual successor to Titan Quest. It is an indie-made action RPG. It's a standalone offline single-player game that has multiplayer through LAN and through peer-to-peer -peer connections. And uh, it is fantastic. It is on the more deep uh, complex end of the action RPG spectrum. It's not quite as fast paced or as smooth playing as games like Diablo 3, but if you're a fan of games like Path of Exile and like your theory crafting action RPGs, then you're going to love this game because it has a lot of cool things to offer. So this series, I'll be taking you guys through the progression of a beginner build. This is going to be part one, the getting started with a nice, easy, strong beginner's build that's going to have you just face roll through even the veteran mode of the game. There's two modes of the normal difficulty of the game there's normal and veteran and veteran has more difficult enemies and more elite enemies to fight against and uh, I've absolutely face rolled the entirety of the first act and uh, well into act two and it seems to be not slowing down anytime soon so I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update on how this is going and as I progress the build I'll check in with you guys and give you some more updates so this build is an occultist plus shaman they're the two masteries that are being used and combined to create this build which creates the conjurer class now what I'm specifically going to be doing with the, this particular type of conjurer because there's a few different conjurers you can do you could do like a summoner conjurer or you could do even an attack based conjurer but this particular conjurer is a damage over time spellcaster. So I'll be focusing on vitality and bleeding damage to be able to tick down enemies and kill them really quickly with a lot of stacking damage over time effects. So, starting off, we start off with the Shaman Mastery, and we'll be picking up and focusing on Devouring Swarm. Eventually, we'll be putting in multiple different skills into the build uh, that each provide different damage over time effects or support damage over time effects. But starting out with this build, you're going to be starting with Devouring Swarm, and it is very strong if you put a bunch of points into it as you begin to level. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown of how this plays first, and then I'll take you guys through the skill tree and the gearing for what we've done so far. So I'm here in the uh, the Warden's Laboratory area, essentially. Let's even go to the later parts of the Warden's Laboratory, which is the uh, most, you know, the highest kind of area, the final boss run area in Act 1. So this will lead towards the final boss. I might not show the final boss for you guys who are new to the game and want to avoid spoilers, but uh, this is... The, uh, you know, it can be a pretty tough area when you first uh, run into this area with a new build. But uh, right now, and even when I first ran through here before progressing into Act 2, I was one-shotting everything with this build. So basically what we'll be doing is we'll summon our Briarthorn just here, who basically just tanks for us. He'll run around and distract mobs and kind of get in their way, disrupt them while we spend time uh, essentially devouring enemies. And he also uh, can later get a, uh, a taunting skill as well to help taunt and help him distract. So he kind of tanks for us as we start leveling. But Devouring Swarm, you essentially fire into a pack. It'll deal an initial hit of Vitality damage, and then it will stack a powerful bleed damage over time effect on them. If you don't one-shot them with the Vitality hit, which you often will, they will tick down very quickly from the bleed. So you can see these Flesh War Butchers ticking down from the bleed just there. Now, undead enemies like skeletons and ghosts are very highly resistant to bleeds, but Devouring Swarm itself has minus bleed resistance. You can see at my current level it's minus 51 bleed resistance, which means that you can still deal a lot of bleeding damage to undead creatures, and it's not a problem. However, occasionally you will come across against a tougher creature here, and that's where our cultist skill, Curse of Frailty, comes into effect, and this lowers bleed resistance and Vitality Resistance once you get the upgrade for it even further. So we'll clear up these ads just here. We have got a pretty powerful uh, heroic enemy just here. We'll hit him with a couple. You can uh, kind of, although the dot lasts several seconds, you can keep hitting with the skill to deal additional hits of the initial Vitality damage. Now another important point to know about this skill is that it also leeches life based on that initial Vitality hit. So if we go into it here you can see 46% of attack damage converted into health. And you'll see if I take a bunch of damage here, you'll see how it, if that if my Brythorn doesn't kill everything. Let's go find a larger pack. <laughs> you'll see how, uh, how tanky you'll be just from this leech alone. This gives you immense amounts of survivability. So let's see if we can go find a pack of enemies here. We've got, we've got these guys here. We'll take a few hits. 
and I'll just cast once, and you'll see how much my health jumps up. So each cast, and that was just for a single hit on a single mob. If you fire into a pack that hits, and it, and this pierces this skill, so it'll fire through the entire pack. Each hit will heal you based on that amount of vitality damage dealt. So you'll end up healing a lot of your life back, and uh, you'll just end up being able to even against bosses. You can just keep casting and keep getting tons and tons of life back. So, a little later on, towards the end of Act 1, as you move into Act 2, you'll also be picking up the Wendigo Totem. This is another supporting skill that we'll start to uh, invest into once we max out our Devouring Swarms, once we get those Locusts, those uh, bee throw ability, kind of looks like you're hurling a ton of bees at enemies. You'll get this Wendigo Totem, which heals you and damages enemies. So you'll drop this Totem on things, and then if you're standing in the area, he'll keep healing you, so you can see the healing effect pulsating there as he deals damage to enemies. So. Same sort of idea, we can throw him down on top of enemies and essentially stand there and face tank as we get immense amounts of healing back to our character. So, you can see it's pretty damn effective, but there's a fair bit going on behind the scenes that we'll start going into now. So let me head back to town, I'll give you guys the rundown on how you'll go about allocating skills and then how you'll go about scaling them through gear. And I'll take a little bit of a look at the devotion tree and some of the things you'll do early on with that as well. So skill wise, as soon as you reach level two, take the shaman mastery and what you're going to be doing is spending one point into shaman and then putting all of your points into devouring swarm as much as possible so i recommend going to something like 10 on devouring swarm that's basically what i did was went rush straight to 10 and at that point you'll be one-shotting everything so you don't need to go straight to 16 right away with every single level you get but you can get up to 10 and you'll be one-shotting everything doing immense amounts of damage to heroic enemies and you'll have more than enough damage for quite some time so once you get to about 10 on Devouring Swarm, if you find you're already really one-shotting things, it's not a problem, you can kind of wait a little bit. But uh, once you get to about 10, invest a couple more points into Shaman, this will help with equipping some gear, and then get more Drogons packed. It's uh, essential that you try and get as much energy regeneration as possible early on because maxing out a skill like this early on is very powerful and it will allow you to kill enemies very quickly. However, it does uh, take its toll on your energy and it can be a little hard to maintain that. Thankfully, as this is a damage over time skill, most of the time you only need to fire once and the pack will either explode instantly or they'll tick down and die. You don't need to keep spamming the skill to kill them. So even though it has a very high energy cost and you can see how much energy each cast consumes, and if I keep casting, it's going to wear down even my energy at this point. But thanks to very high energy regen, I can cast once on a pack, move around a bit, pack will chase me and die. You know, aim on the next pack. Don't stand there spamming on top of one pack. You know, group up enemies, have them chase you. If they keep chasing you, cast through them like that. Or cast through, cast through packs and then move around them and then move to the next pack and cast on the next pack. And if the old pack is still alive, then you can do a second cast. And that'll, ha that'll help you a lot with your energy management. But Mordragon's Pact will give you a bit of extra survivability and that extra bit of energy regen you need. And you can get a couple of points in this and respec, them l respec out of them later as you need to. There is a respec uh, person just up here in the corner of town as well if you haven't uh, noticed them. They are kind of hidden away over there and you can spend a little bit of iron to respec out of those skill points you've spent just there. So, once you have a couple points of more dragons packed and you're able to manage your energy just fine, I recommend heading over to 10, so pumping this up to 10, and then getting one point in Briarthorn. Just one point alone is enough to be able to have your Briarthorn uh, out on the field and tanking for you. And uh, he'll help a lot with boss fights, the boss will sometimes attack them. They do tend to prioritize you most of the time, but even splitting up their focus like 25% is 25% less damage you're taking. And you'll find that even in doorways sometimes the Briarthorn will rush forwards, set him to aggressive using this just here. I didn't have him set to aggressive just there. Set him to aggressive and he'll rush to enemies and he'll often block them in doorways and things and you can just shoot your devouring swarm through the doorways and uh, that will kill them without any problems. So not only do we have massive damage and healing but we also have a pet to tank for us as well. Easy, easy beginner's build, crushing it. And even on hard, like hardcore, you could play hardcore with this as a brand new play to the game and probably to do pretty damn well without dying. So pretty nice start to the game. Now from there, uh, you have a, you have a couple choices. I would probably recommend going back and maxing Devouring Swarm once you have Briarthorn. Getting it to 16 is a, uh, a good thing to rush for, and then you'll have all the damage you need to carry you through from there on out. And it's just at that point about getting extra stats to equip gear and also getting supporting skills. So maxing out your Devouring Swarm, then I'm going to recommend going into Occultist. About that point, you should be able to take your Occultist Mastery, if not already. Spend the point and then get a point in Curse of Frailty. 
You can get a couple points if you want. Each point lowers bleed resist, but more importantly, it slows enemies' move speed, which will allow you to group up more dangerous packs of enemies. As you slow, let's say you've got a really big pack of enemies, as you slow the front of the pack, the rear of the pack will move up to the front of the pack because they'll be moving at a slower pace and they'll all group up and then you can do another attack and burst them all down. So that movement speed slow is quite powerful. So getting even just a point in that is really nice, but you can certainly get a couple of points in it as well. From here, I recommend going to 15, getting a couple points in Heart of the Wild. If you're not really having any survivability issues and you're not playing on Hardcore, then you could even just skip this or just put one point in it for now and go straight to 20 and then start picking up the Wendigo Totem. You'll notice that some bosses will take a little longer to kill and you'll have to spam your skill. Maybe you'll start running out of energy. Wendigo Totem will help with that a lot and also allow you to stand there and face tank. I had the easiest Warden fight of all time with this. Dropped the Totem on top of the Warden, stood there and just spammed my Devouring Swarm. Popped maybe one or two energy potions to keep my energy up, and he was dead. Easy peasy. Very easy fight, so very nice. Even uh, kind of might be a little too easy if I'm trying to introduce a lot of the mechanics of the game to beginners, but it's this game's very, very complex and very difficult anyway, so I don't think it's too bad if you have a bit of an easier time on your first build and learn about a lot of the game's features, and then you can go back and make your own builds. So that's maybe not the worst thing in the world. So while you're at level 20, it's not a bad idea also to grab just one point in Ground Slam. You don't really need additional points in this. We're not aiming for our pet to deal damage. This is just about generate additional threat, stuns target. That's what you want. So just the one point in that is fine. 1.8 second stun. Getting the 0.2 extra stun is not really that useful. This won't work on bosses, but this will work on a lot of other enemies. And the generate additional threat is very useful for getting them to focus on him. When he uses that, they'll, you know, they'll turn and face him and start focusing on him, grouping up on top of him, and you'll be able to cast your Devouring Swarms and wreck their faces. So your priority from then on out will just be about maxing that Wendigo totem and also getting to 10 on a cultist and getting that vulnerability. This upgrade here lowers their vitality resistance, which will help with the Wendigo totem and the initial hit of your Devouring Swarm as well. And from then on out, that'll be for the next guide. So you'll have to stay tuned for that guide if you want to see where to take that build from there. But just as just as some hints, essentially we're going to be taking um, Bloody Pox to add an extra damage over time effect and the uh, Curse of Frailty will give us basically our four skills. Anything more than that's going to be too much to cast on regular regular packs. So we'll be doing Devouring Swarm eventually, Curse of Frailty, Bloody Pox, and Wendigo Totem, possibly eventually swapping out over into Storm Totem with the transmuter that converts the lightning damage into vitality damage, because this may actually be a better and more useful damage dealer, but we'll be using Wendigo Totem for leveling. So that's the long t some of the long-term plans, but I'll get more into more detail with that as we progress with the build in future vid videos. The Devotion system, if you're unfamiliar with this, you'll find shrines out in the world as you explore around. Activating those shrines and restoring them will give you a point in the Devotion system that you can spend to start getting these passive skills and even proc effects, which are essentially skills that will cast on a certain uh, thing happening. So this is 20% chance on, a hap on, on attack of Twin Fangs proccing. So what I recommend for the Devotion tree is straight away get Crossroads here and then go into the bat. Bat is vitality bleed damage. What can I say? Vitality bleed damage, a bit of extra life leech damage as well, which scales flat life leech and the 3% attack damage converted health, all very good stuff. And Twin Fangs is also extremely nice on this and helps a lot with single target damage. Twin Fangs, what you'll do is you'll link it to your Devouring Swarm. And the beautiful thing about damage over time effects in this game is that the ticks, so every time a dot, let's say every half a second it goes and deals damage to them, and that's called a tick, essentially. A tick of the dot is whenever that damage is applied to the enemy. Every tick has a chance of proccing these sorts of skills. So Twin Fangs will cast very often, and it will basically fly out towards random enemies or the enemies that proc it, and uh, will deal a big chunk of extra vitality and pierce damage, as well as leeching some additional life to you. Fantastic, great place to start. If you're playing hardcore, it's not a bad idea to, from there, go into the turtle as well. I'm not playing hardcore here, but I'm kind of simulating that experience. And uh, turtle gives you some nice defensive stuff, in addition to 100% chance on 40 health of giving you a damage absorption shield. Very nice, even not in hardcore, this is still a very nice thing to go for, and we'll be using this for leveling, so that's what I'm getting next. So I mentioned procs on the devotion tree, and that's a very good thing to look for in gear as well. You'll find a bunch of weapons with things like this pair of gloves here, 5% chance on attack of launching a lightning sphere at the enemies. 
any of these you can get, prioritize getting these as much as possible because you will be proccing these a lot. You may have seen when I was running around killing things, lightning orbs were spamming out as well as little little fangs going out. You can rewind and have a look if you want. Um, but uh, these are very nice things to stack and will add in a lot of extra damage, a lot of extra single target damage to this as well, which is the only thing that it kind of almost lacks, not really quite though. So a pro tip for when you're starting out, like right when you very first begin, a lot of these houses, there's at least two that I know of, will have randomly spawning weapons with these procs on them. So I found a, uh, a sword and a uh, pistol that both had these procs, and those are the best thing to get really early on. So just after you leave town, not a bad idea to do this anyway, kill some zombies, explore these houses, find some of those weapons and get one of those equipped, and that will get you a really nice starting point to continue on from there. And even just with Devouring Swarm level 1, right at that point, you'll be wrecking things. So stat distribution, every time you level up you get a point to put in attributes, and this can also give you a bit of an idea of what to prioritize on gear as well. I recommend going 2 in Spirit, 2 in Cunning, and 1 in Physique. That's the ratio essentially. So you can go, you can go, you know, 1, 1, 1, and then just put another one in Cunning and Spirit if you want. Um, if you're playing in Hardcore, you may want to focus on Physique a little more, just to be a little tough. But uh, essentially the breakdown of what this is, is Physique just gives us health and health regen, so it's purely survivability. Cunning gives a duration, so damage over time effect damage, and um, bleed damage as well. So on top of that, it also affects, in this game, uh, accuracy, crit chance, and crit damage are kind of rolled all into the one stat, offensive ability. Cunning gives offensive ability, which also applies to damage over time effects, and damage over time effects can crit too, so Cunning is probably the best damage scaler overall. Spirit gives us energy and energy regen, and then magical damage, which is our vitality damage. So it's pretty good. Cunning being the best stat, Spirit being pretty good and kind of necessary to get some energy, and then Physique just being necessary to get a bit for gear. You will need to pump Spirit a little bit or get someone geared to equip some spellcaster gear that you want to equip as well. So that's why I recommend kind of going two and two, even though Cunning is a little better, and then just putting a little bit in Physique to try and keep your character nice and safe. So for damage scaling on gear, what you're going to be looking for is percent vitality damage. Now, as I said before, prioritize procs, so those skills that will cast on ticks of damage over time effects. Those are more powerful early on. But if you can, if you can't get one and you find a vitality weapon damage, uh, vitality damage weapon like this, nine percent vitality damage that scales it up. However. The 4 vitality damage, that flat 4 vitality damage, only applies to the actual attack. That doesn't apply to spells like Devouring Swarm, so that's actually not that useful. So only re this is only really giving us the physique, the pierce resistance, and the vitality damage. So although this weapon looks really good for this build, it's not that good. I'm definitely trying to look for better weapons with higher amounts of vitality damage. If you can find anything that uh, supplements any of your skills, that's also a very good thing to go for. This has plus one to summon Bryothorn, making our Bryothorn tankier. Not that bad. Skill cooldown reduction is not really necessary on this build, but it's slightly helpful. Minus skill energy cost is very helpful though, as you saw our uh, energy costs are pretty high and that minus 13% is very nice. This one just has some spirit and health and offensive ability on it, as well as all damage, so this is a pretty nice tome in general. If you can get large amounts of cunning on gear, then go for it. This one here is cunning and spirit scaling, so very nice, two very good stats for us, obviously. And also plus one to vulnerability as well, so this was a very nice chest to find. Plus one to vulnerability scaling up our uh, element, our vitality resistance uh, additive on the Curse of Frailty. Because you're going to have so much damage on this build, I recommend for the most part prioritizing resistances and life wherever possible. As you can see, this one here is pierce resistance, poison and acid resistance, and health. Prioritize when you're beginning, fire, cold, lightning, poison, and pierce, and then start later on trying to get some things like bleed, resist, vitality, and aether, become, and chaos become more useful later on. So this top line of resists is very useful in the first two acts, and I would start with prioritizing those. Finally, I want to make a very special mention for something that very nice that you can look out for. I found this Locust Gem Epic Amulet the first time I killed the Warden from his chest, and this is godly for this build. It is perfect. Vitality and bleed damage, obviously. Attack damage converted to health, nice, but plus two to Devouring Swarm. That's the real key there. That further lowers their bleed and vitality resist and adds more flat base damage that everything else scales off. You can see, you can actually exceed the maximum level that you can put points into. So I maxed it out at 16 by putting points into it, but it actually got to 18 out of 16 through that plus two. So that's a fantastic amulet to find. And that can drop pretty early on, being player level 22 it can drop off Warden. So 
Uh, not a bad idea. Maybe if you want to try and go for it to do some warden farming runs, it's gonna, it's certainly not gonna hurt you at all. But uh, maybe you'll get as lucky as I did and get this to drop as well, and that's just gonna enhance this even further. Builds godly without this for this point in the game, but amazing with it. So just as a quick refresh, focus on life, cunning, and spirit scaling as much as possible. Flat life on gear can kind of uh, supplement not having much physique, uh, and then your resistances are the main things. And then for damage, vitality and bleeding scaling, so percentage amounts, not flat amounts, and all damage scaling also works as well. Guys, Grim Dawn is a pretty complex and difficult game for new players, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comments below and I'll try and answer there. If they're more complex, then I may even make a video out of them, so I really encourage you guys to leave those questions down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys for the next update on this build. I'll be playing it on stream if you want to check it out. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.